Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome to 2022. We're kicking off the new year good with a brand new reaction to a brand new game theory on FNAF, this time the brand new game FNAF Security Breach, which we just finished our own playthrough, link down below if you want to go check it out. Fair disclaimer, I've said this on Twitter, I don't think I've said it on YouTube here, uh, I do have COVID right now, so hey, that's a, that's a great great thing to have at the end of the year on Christmas going into the new year so oh boy I feel <laughs> I just feel I, I feel so bad so if I sound terrible I look terrible if I'm not talking a whole lot I apologize definitely not how I want to kick off the new year so let's not waste any more time I think this brand new game theory it says FNAF don't trust Gregory so I know for a while MatPat has been thinking that Gregory might be a robot so I have a feeling this is kind of what the episode's gonna be about. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is FNAF Security Breach Game Theory, Don't Trust Gregory. Here we go, three, two, one, hit the like button, subscribe for more game theory reactions and more content this year. Here we After go. After years of waiting, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach has finally launched, and with Let's it, go. we now have a whole load of mysteries to discuss. What's the deal with the Vanny therapy tapes? Why is yeah, this those are weird. from sister location in the pizza That's place? weird. Who is the best animatronic, and why is Obviously. it Music Obviously Man? Obviously Music Man! There are a lot of things to solve music in this massive man. game, as lore hides behind every pirate poster and inside every arcade cabinet. But the Quite theory literally, both of those. But the goes to the heart of this game, addressing the one character that we spend a lot of time with but don't actually see all that much and that's our main character of security breach Gregory. Gregory yep in a franchise full of dead kids I want to focus on the first ever living child we've seen in the main story <laughs> is of the, it the first one except for in the fruity maze minigame but we all know that she ends up dead who yeah. is Gregory what is Gregory and why is he such a cold-hearted savage to Roxy and the rest of the animatronic gang? <laughs> I'm great. I'm so mad that you're driving without my permission yeah, Matt's doing a playthrough. He hasn't finished the game so <laughs> oh far. So I didn't think Gregory we'd get an episode this early, is but brutal. My friends, I guess he the recorded them earlier. The questions will recontextualize everything that you thought you knew about this series. So let's begin. Here we go. Ah, brand new FNAF game theory. Feels good. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, the show that can't help but stuff its face with FNAF lore like Chica stuffs her face with pizza and garbage. I guess at this <laughs> point it kind of applies to us, too. Anyway, if you want to yeah, stuff your YouTube not feed true. with FNAF videos, I mean, very then hit true. that subscribe <laughs> button right now, because today starts what I expect wrong. to be a three-part <laughs> series into the many unsolved three. mysteries of Security Breach. Right. I mean, on the surface, the subscribe game seems so pretty self-explanatory, right? Survive being trapped in a mall for one night. Looks like the new team forgot to read the title of the franchise. <laughs> That's nothing. That's easy. Yeah. Once you start looking into secret rooms, secret tapes, secret endings, secret minigames, and actually bother to read all the emails and item descriptions, you learn that there is a lot more here. There Stuff is that a looks lot. Both backwards at the series that came before and forwards into what is coming next. Stuff that, quite frankly, I'm still working on piecing together. This is a mm. big game with lots of places to hide. Understandable. Things. But today, I want to focus on a mystery that I do feel like I have a pretty solid handle on the relationship between. Between Gregory and Glamrock. Freddy. Oh, the best What's in the game. Deal with this random kid and why is a killer animatronic suddenly trying to help him? Like seriously, the game kicks off with this incredible cutscene. Everyone is living their best 80s fantastic lives on stage before Freddy suddenly glitches out and smash cut to Gregory just being there. I guess it is one of the weirdest, most jarring intros to a game ever. And then from that yeah, point forward, we're just expected really to assume that everything is perfectly normal, no explanations necessary. <laughs> so I'm here to give you that explanation. Explanation, because I strongly suspect that this boy is not a boy and this robot is not a robot and that the story of their relationship okay. is one that's trying to make amends for one of the earliest and most pivotal points from this entire franchise. To begin, let's oh. establish what we do know about Gregory in order to piece together the rest. So what does the game offer us in terms of his backstory? Nothing. First and foremost, <laughs> we know that yeah. he's pretty much off the radar. <laughs> At the start of the game, Freddy does a quick scan only to realize your guest profile is unknown to me. Similarly, when security guard Vanessa is chatting it up with Freddy, we hear this part of their conversation. That is great news. He can be returned to his parents. He doesn't have any 
Turns out, there's no record of him. Clearly, Gregory is not a guest at the Pizzaplex. It also seems like he has nowhere else to go. In the game's bad ending, yeah. unlocked by just leaving the building at 6 a.m., we box. see Gregory winding up in an alleyway sleeping in a cardboard box. He appears to be homeless. He's an orphan. This then explains a few other things that we see around the Pizzaplex. In a couple of hidden locations around the building, we find little dens that are filled with drawings, plushies, and beds. The most notable oh, one yeah. being the one behind the daycare center. Gregory seems to be living inside the Pizzaplex, which would explain his lack of a guest pass. We can't even yeah, be sure that, that his name sense. is Gregory. In the game's opening scene, Gregory has no issues speaking to Freddy. Will you shut up? Who said that? <laughs> I did. However, once Freddy asks him for his name, he stutters. I, uh, I'm... Gregory. Why would he stutter on his name when he was clearly fine answering everything else just seconds before? So, what? Is that it? Gregory's huh. just some homeless kid that sets up shop in the Pizza Plex and happens to get wrapped up in Afton and Vanny's plans? <laughs> yeah, right. Of course not. Nothing in this franchise is ever an accident. Take a look at Gregory here. Notice anything familiar? Dark oh, eyes, baby. brown hair with a piece falling. Oh, familiar? Design, Never mind. Shorts, a shirt with two stripes across the middle. Ladies and gentlemen, Gregory is none other than the crying child. Don't believe me? Early on, we get this weird moment when Freddy suddenly stops what he's doing. Not and really, because I don't I think that adds up timeline or eyes. We all know that the language in this franchise is never chosen by accident. Everything <laughs> is meticulously crafted, so is Ooh. it a coincidence then that the word broken is only used one other time in the FNAF series to describe yes, a child? Yes, it actually the iconic is. iconic FNAF 4 clip with crying child and golden Fredbear, you're broken, we're still your friends. No, the I dialogue was you changed. Together. It was like you're, both you have a cut on your arm or something. -like and are but they changed it. Broken screams of a connection hey. existing between these two. Him being the crying child would also explain why he has nowhere else to go. His dad is an undead zombie living inside a yellow bunny suit, and his mom is M.I.A. There's also lines like this. Your parents want you to follow me. Your family is looking for you. Let me take you to your parents. On one hand, this just sounds like Chica spouting out some generic security protocol. On the other hand, if indeed Gregory is the crying child, Chica's lines here take on a whole new meaning because she is quite literally bringing him to his family, his father living in the basement, William Afton. But obviously there's one big problem with this, one that I'm sure all of you are screaming at your monitors or typing aggressively <laughs> down in the comments. Or Crying just calmly talking because I feel like dead. crap right he now. He died in yeah. FNAF 4 when his older yeah, brother Michael picked him up to be chomped. And not only did he die, his soul then went on to be one of the two spirits possessing Golden, Golden Freddy, Freddy, the other being the vengeful <laughs> spirit Cassidy, before he was finally put to rest by the puppet in the happiest day ending of FNAF 3. This kid sure, is yeah. well and truly gone. He is removed from the franchise. He is one of the few cards that are officially off the lore table. <laughs> so why then do I dare invoke his name here? Because Gregory is a robot. A rebuilt yeah. version of the crime. This is what Matt's Flame been theorizing for a while. Because it's time for everyone's favorite segment. Matt Pat uses the lore from multiple FNAF books to try and explain parts <laughs> of the game that don't make sense. I'll try to make this as quick as, I love this segment. as possible. In the books, children <clears throat> having tragic, premature deaths and then being rebuilt as robots by their grieving fathers is something that happens a lot. Like, if I had a nickel for every time this plot line showed up, I'd have, well, I'd have like three nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's <laughs> weird that it happened wow, three times. Three. In the original novel trilogy, the whole thing keep using that twisted that that ones Charlie, cover? daughter of Henry Emily, died as a kid, and that her father put her back together by building robotic versions of her to try <clears> representing a different stage of her growing up development. Then again, in Fast Bear Frights, we have the character of Eleanor, who is strongly implied to have been built as a replacement daughter, as well as Dr. Talbert, who developed Remnant as a way to preserve his people. sick and dying daughter. <laughs> and I all still of this haven't is read the dang even books. Going into the numerous stories where children get swapped out for robots and or Fazgoo, which uh, Not once Fazgoo. it has your DNA basically creates a clone of you. Oh, uh, if no. that's the future of the franchise, we're going down some weird paths, my friends. Anyway, like we have already. There's evidence in the wider canon that FNAF 4's lines about the crying child being broken and needing to be put back together were meant to be much more literal than any of us first suspected. But we don't even have to go that far. Within Security Breach itself, there is plenty of evidence to suggest that Gregory isn't exactly what he seems. When Vanny spots you and starts to get closer, your vision gets a CRT effect. Basically, the yeah. horizontal lines that old TV that was, monitors used to get. So and weird. it's worth 
remembering that since this is a first person game that is representing your vision so why are your eyes suddenly behaving like cameras on the fritz unless you know they are cameras on the fritz later in the game once we what defeat roxanne wolf joke. we can take out her <laughs> eyes and upgrade freddy our faz watch tells us that quote roxy sees things differently than others sometimes she'll stare and talk to the other bots through walls she's able to see things that others can't which allows us to see collectibles like secret cds in a way she mm -hmm. has a sort of x-ray vision which is why when you first install him into freddy his comment really stands out how are your new eyes i am having a hard time adjusting you look different to me Hmm. It's almost like hmm. he was seeing Gregory as a normal child, but now that he has these new eyes, he's able to see through Gregory's skin and reveal something that he wasn't expecting, like a robo. animatronic endoskeleton. Also, Gregory can be inside Freddy when he's inside the charging stations, which on its own feels weird. Like, I kind of expected you to hop out and leave him to charge, but nope, <laughs> we pilot him inside of it and then sit there as he charges. Or could it be that those charging stations are as much for us as they are for him? Remember that secret Yeah, but you can totally go throughout Gregory the game. Living, there's a strange amount of decommissioned and what appear to be salvaged security robots. Maybe for a kid who needs a robotic upgrade. The fact that there's no record of Gregory would also make sense. If he's an animatronic, there wouldn't be records of him because he's not technically a human. <laughs> no it human also here. Why Gregory has no parents. But maybe the biggest point of evidence comes from the very beginning of the game, where during the opening cutscene we see Freddy glitch out. This sets him on a course of being good for the rest of the game. But what causes that? glitch to happen in the first place. Well, by going frame Probably. by frame, we can see that there's a security threat on the loose, and it looks to be a small child. What? It's Gregory. It has to be. Gregory is the threat here, a robot that poses a threat to Freddy's programming. But why? How? What, what, what would make sense about that? Hmm. Well, to understand that connection, it's time to put a pin in Gregory and turn our attention over to Freddy. Freddy! If you unlock the game's final My secret man, ending, Freddy. you end up going below the pizza plex, only to discover a former Freddy Fazbear location, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place. If that name doesn't mean anything to you, it Five, nine, six. Really, most of the restaurants Five. in the series go unnamed. But while the name might not mean anything, Five, the layout Wait. should be a familiar one. One large Does he not know it's actually called Pizza Place? big Wait, speakers what? on either side and a smaller semicircle it's in one of the pizza sim it. endings from matt how do you miss pizzeria that simulator <laughs> notice the stools that are placed right come in front, on man the checkered floor we even have purple striped tablecloths and blue green and red plates exactly like we yeah. saw in pizzeria simulator as a refresher this is the location that henry lured all of the roaming animatronics to in order to burn and them to the such ground a good ending that all meant nothing you, the darkest pit of hell has you just had to keep going scott didn't you so don't keep the devil waiting, old friend. And this is it, here. Seems like Henry's plan didn't quite work as expected. We still <laughs> see pretty much everyone... That's exactly what it says in the Ultimate Guide. They're all alive and well and thriving underground. Springtrap is there. Molten Freddy is there as this big black blob. And if you look inside that blob, you can even see Baby. And heck, even the puppet. Kind of lessens the impact of that Savage Henry speech <sighs> from FNAF 6. But whatever. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the reason I bring this up... Literally is means me nothing at this point. Everyone that I totally called something like this happening at the end of the last theory from a year ago is that one character is notably absent here, Michael Afton, who we're reasonably sure was the guard working at the FNAF 6 location and the one who helped to burn it down. And to you, my brave volunteer, who somehow found this job listing not, not intended, intended for you. you. Although, Although there, there was, was a way out planned for you, I have, I have a feeling, feeling that's, that's not, not what you want. You want. I have, I have a, a feeling, feeling that you are right, right where you want to be. be. After being scooped, turning purple, Good and memories. trying to undo hey, his family that ending meant location something. by location, he went down with the ship and burned so alongside upset. his father and sister. So which upset. means that presumably he should be here somewhere. And yet he's not. Unless, of course, he's taking Is he going to call Glamrock form, Freddy? Say perhaps yeah. Glamrock Freddy. This is another you know, theory I've heard about. Freddy's been down here based on some of the lines that he drops in the finale. I know what this is. I have been here before. She brought me here. I had no choice. That's now a problem, a though, choice. is like she brought me here, but he would have already been there. Are here. So, so, I don't know. Angry. Confused. Why would Vanny want to make you. Michael so see he's in a place where he all his family possessed. again? We also hear that Freddy isn't acting like his normal self, saying, I am not me. 
And in yet another ending, the fire ending, Freddy is more than prepared to set the place ablaze, much like Michael Afton did to Fazbear Frights at the end of FNAF 3. I guess old habits die hard. And nothing <laughs> says that clearer than the replica of Mike's room yeah. from Sister Location that's hiding inside the pizza plex. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, hidden inside the mall is the exact replica of Mike's living room from Sister Location, down to the TV, lamp, and basket of exotic butters. Exotic, exotic butters! But butters. <laughs> But here's the kicker. Over oh, on Mike's wall is a coded message, one that was solved through an incredible team effort from Daco and the rest of the FNAF subreddit. It reads as follows, quote, Break and mend, I built the breath. They hunt now, drawn to life. Not real, still me. And frit and fraught with thought and zest and guessed no blunt woes. Dodge, Whoa. duck, <laughs> flash, shoot, crawl, run, crush the vile ban. Cry not, try not, do not hold out hope. Your life, your aim will save those with soul. I feel like this is some sort of a poetry <laughs> reading. Snaps, everyone. Snaps. There you go. Snaps. There you go. That was yeah, good. That was, that was, that was, that all right. Was good. Basically, this is just a bunch of fancy talk all relating to Mike's personal journey. The first line is all about breaking and repairing things, and in doing that, creating new life. In other words, Ennard and Baby. The rest is all about his commitment to okay. try and stop the evil animatronics and try to save well, any of them with a the soul fast, left in their man. bodies. Now, does the presence of this room and poem necessarily mean that Mike is Freddy? No. But I do think it's telling hmm. that we're reminded of Mike's commitment to save everyone inside so of a room. So he's not saying Mike's Freddy? To find Alone in the dark, I'm like e without Glamrock Freddy wrong. hovering over your shoulders. Heck, during the finale, we even get this line from Glamrock Freddy. My friends are here. They are so angry. Confused. He's talking about Molten Freddy, the spirits trapped inside of the blob. It's very possible that those were indeed his friends captured and killed back in the day. Maybe William himself struck back against Chicken the kids no. that had bullied his youngest son. And now some of their spirits are trapped Dangle below no. the surface as part of the blob in this abandoned restaurant. Or maybe that's why Gregory is so brutal to all of these animatronics at the end of each boss battle. I hate they killing them. They killed him back in 1983, and now it's his turn to show the bullies no mercy. By launching a go-kart at their face and ripping <laughs> out their eyeballs. And meanwhile, Freddy is sad because they are quite literally his friends from when they were alive. But to me, honestly, the biggest connection points between Mike and Glamrock Freddy are thematic. Their narrative. Mike has been moving to location after location to try and undo his father's horrible work. This would just be a continuation of that story, as both Afton's return post fire. And more importantly, it also completes the arc of the crying child and his older brother. Since accidentally killing his brother in FNAF 4, Michael's been trying to make amends. This would be quite literally their grand reunion. An older brother finally able to protect and defend his younger sibling in a way that he failed to earlier in their lives. This is also mm. why Freddy's programming would glitch out after he encounters Gregory in the opening cutscene. The soul Child of Mike detected. buried deep in Most Freddy's protect. code comes through upon sensing his brother again. It hotwires the system so that Michael Afton, in the body of Freddy, can defend his kid brother. And the Afton story doesn't stop there either. In part of the Pizzaplex, we find a family dinner scene made up of decommissioned yes. staff robots. A father, a mother that <clears throat> kind of looks like Ballora, a daughter with rosy cheeks and orange pigtails, a son, and one with its head missing, the child whose head was bitten off in 1983. This hmm. is this very <laughs> clearly the Afton family. There is no doubt about that. The story continues in this game. In fact, I expect that's why the Save Vanny ending here is so important. If you manage to find and complete all the Princess Quest arcade cabinets hidden throughout the Pizzaplex, you get an ending where we are able to save Vanny from the control of glitch trap. This is something that we predicted would be possible literally a year mm -hmm. ago in a theory, but I bring this up not to pat myself on the back, but rather to call out the final <laughs> moment of this ending, where we see Gregory, Freddy, and Vanny all sitting together on a hill. A hill that I should point out is oddly reminiscent of the FNAF 6 <coughs> Gravestone Hill. It feels it is? Wait, like all these it's a hill. characters have Wait. some sort of history. Wait, I'm Why not singing Vanny gravestones. Be there Wait, otherwise? it's a hill. Unless Wait, this on. is meant to be the crying child, Michael, and maybe even a Elizabeth, the Afton oh, children, no. the three kids who literally had their Don't lives stolen this. by the evil deeds of their father, finally reunited, finally able to share a moment of peace on this hill. After all, Vanessa does have green eyes and blonde hair, just like someone else that we know from the series, but uh, that's probably a theory that's best saved for another day. Absolutely. Long story short here, Gregory <laughs> isn't just any day. kid. He's not just what a crying the child either. He's the rebuilt version of the crying child, an animatronic designed to fill the void left 
left by the death of Afton's youngest son, literally put back together piece by piece. And Mike, meanwhile, is also back, glammed out this time, continuing to make amends for his past by reuniting with the brother that he accidentally killed as a kid and protecting him in a way that he never could before. Which then leaves us with a question, who's Vanny? How does she fit into all this? Why Vinny. does she fit into all Vinny. this? And why does robot Gregory glitch out each and every time she gets close? That, my theory Yeah, you never really actually talked talk about that. Because this episode's running long, and honestly, I need more time to think through the answer. <laughs> so in the meantime, theorists, remember, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss how all these clues wow. fit together. You're not oh, going to nice. want to miss that next episode, mostly because, you know, if you do, the FNAF lore will no longer make any sense to you whatsoever. True, Plus, hit true. the subscribe button's free, and let's be honest. Hey, subscribe point, to me. To yourself so to it you'll out. not but miss my reactions. Remember, it's all just a theory. A, a game, game theory. theory. Thanks for watching. Let's go, Game Theory Five Nights Freddy. All right. That was nice. Uh, a lot of theories that I've heard before, so, uh, you know, I, I kind of knew some of the evidence already, but I, it was nicely put together. Still don't know. Still have a few problems. Number one, the line about it being broken. During the reaction, I don't like pausing, because I know some people hate when you pause to talk in the middle of a reaction video, and I understand that, so that's why I usually like to wait uh, until the end. But in the original dialogue, Gregory was like bleeding and he was saying how Vanessa wanted to kill him instead of you know She's trying to get me or it was it was uh, she's trying to kill me and the original line of I feel you're broken was like you're bleeding You know, it's like you have a cut on your arm or it's something like that. So uh, But it got changed for I don't know honestly probably trying to keep it a bit more family friendly which I know people hate but whatever so that could have just been a quick rewrite of the dialogue it, it could not mean anything but it could at the same time so I just wanted to point that out but yeah overall very interesting theory I know MadPad has been talking about Gregory might being a robot for a long time so it's interesting to see a bunch of evidence now for a dedicated video on that same thing with Michael maybe being Glamrock Freddy, I don't know. But I'm very interested. It seems like next episode, it'll be about Vanny and Vanessa and probably the, the therapist tapes that we heard about recently. So that's probably the one I'm most looking forward to because those tapes, man, God dang it. <laughs> I was listening to them and in my video, I'm like, you, your father's name is Bill, right? Not Will. And then people in the comments said, oh, but Bill is a nickname for Will. William, so I'm very, very pleased to hear that. Just so, so excited. So yeah, I'm very interested about that. Subscribe so you don't miss my reaction to more FNAF game theories, and I'm gonna go chill out because this has been 20 minutes of me barely talking, and my throat already hurts. Pity like button hit, maybe. I'll see you next time. <laughs> see you on the flip side. Bye, guys.